What is a church? Today's society contorts even the simplest of definitions. Is a church a place to be entertained? A place of fellowship or self-improvement? A beautiful cathedral or a quaint chapel? The Bible holds the answers for the modern times confusion about the church. A church is a called out assembly of believers. It is the pride of Christ, the pillar and ground of truth, and the God ordained vehicle by which he will accomplish the great commission. Just north of downtown Oklahoma City stands the historic Calvary Baptist Church building. In 2013, it was renovated for use by a local law office while still preserving its distinctive church look. The called out assembly of believers that met here for decades, however, no longer darken the doors. It's a church building with no church. Sadly, this trend isn't limited to Oklahoma City. Baptist churches all over the nation are closing their doors, and many pastors are considering a new journey when they should be settled. What seems to be the driving force behind much of the change is churches in general have lost membership over the last several decades. And so in an effort to gain membership and especially to appeal to a younger generation, churches have tried to do what they feel the younger generation wants in order to bring them back. Many churches have gone away from some of the basic things that all churches of different stripes did a uh, hundred years ago. The basics are some of those things that many churches and even many pastors kind of mock, and that's the basics of teaching His Word, preaching His Word, uh, singing together hymns that were written by a generation that knew a lot about God and loved God. Basics also means an emphasis on basic doctrines. When you leave basic doctrine, what you're left with is basically man's opinion, philosophies. Unfortunately, we have an entire generation of believers who are at best confused about the purpose, the plan, and the preeminence of the New Testament church in their lives, and at worst, feel the church is optional or unnecessary for them as followers of Christ. The two ordinances which Jesus gave his church were baptism and then what we call the Lord's Supper. Baptism is identifying with Christ through immersion, which really is the only way you can truly be baptized. The word itself means to immerse. And so in the local church, people identify with Christ after their salvation by the mode of baptism. And so we believe that's an important part, first step of a believer's Christian life. And then the Lord's Supper, what we're doing is remembering his death, his broken body, and his spilled blood on the cross to purchase our salvation. And so when we do that, it's a great time of remembrance and reflection as we think about ourselves and our own shortcomings and our sin, and we think about Christ and what he did for us on the cross. The generation that is young right now, teens, early 20s, young adults, they are the future leaders. They will be taking the leadership more quickly than they can possibly imagine. They're gonna be the new pastors. They're gonna be the next missionaries. They're gonna be the next deacons and Sunday school teachers. And so to that generation of believers who may be thinking the local church isn't for them or they're just spectators, I'm telling you, you are on the verge of leadership. And it's so important that you maintain the same doctrines and principles and stands and positions that the leadership that you enjoy right now maintains, or in just a generation, we won't recognize independent Baptist churches. It won't take long before our churches can drift away from something we never thought we'd see if this present generation doesn't maintain the same doctrinal standards and positions the older generation has right now. The next generation of students will know what mean these stones.